Hi, welcome to NFPA Link's YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions you have related to fire, electrical, and life safety. With easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards, NFPA Link is your window to productivity. So one of the most common questions here we get about aircraft hangar fire protection is around the classifications of the aircraft hangars themselves. We find the answer to this question and a lot of other requirements for aircraft hangar fire protection in NFPA 409. Let's dive in. So within NFPA 409, we're going to look at aircraft hangar groups, which is over in Chapter 6. So here, we can see the breakdown of Group 1 aircraft hangars, Group 2 aircraft hangars, Group 3, and Group 4. Now the group of the aircraft hangar is going to affect the rest of the requirements in NFPA 409, so it's really essential that you understand what these groups mean and how to properly classify them. So, let's take a look at Group 1 aircraft hangars, which are going to be your largest aircraft hangars. So it's going to have at least one of the following features, so it only needs one of them, it doesn't need to have all of these features. It's going to have an aircraft access door height over 8.5 meters or 28 feet, or provisions for housing an aircraft with tail height over 8.5 meters or 28 feet. So that's one of your triggers. The other one would be a single fire area in excess of 3,716 meters squared or 40,000 square feet. So these are big aircraft hangars. Once we go to group two aircraft hangars, we can see a group two aircraft hangar is one that has both of the following features. This one had at least one of this following. This one needs to have all of them. So an aircraft access door height of eight and a half meters, 28 feet or less. So again, smaller than those group one aircraft hangars and a single fire area for specific types of construction in accordance with table 612. Let's expand this table for a moment. And you can see the types of construction are going to affect your maximum single fire area. So you can see that none of these exceed 40,000 feet or 3,716 meters squared. Finally, we'll go to group three aircraft hangars, which again, need to have both of the following features. So that same aircraft access door height of eight and a half meters, 28 feet or less. So that's the same thing as a group two aircraft hangar. But now this table is gonna have much different maximum single fire areas. Let's take a look. So again, still based on the type of construction, but now we're gonna have that limitation of at most, you're gonna have something that's gonna be 30,000 square feet if it's a type one 443 or type one 332 construction, which would be 2,787 meters squared. But if you're a type five 000 construction, then you're only gonna have a maximum of 5,000 square feet or 465 square meters. And we finally get down to our group four aircraft hangar, which is gonna be any structure constructed of membrane covered rigid steel frame. So again, that's going to be completely different than your group one, two or three aircraft hangars. Something else to keep in mind is if you're in NFPA link, uh, you can go over to fire protection systems and we actually have a scenario here that covers aircraft hangars and gives us some additional information on those, as well as a nice visual here. Here we can even have aircraft hangar groups, and it gives you all those requirements we went through, as well as a helpful summary. So, we hope that provides some insight into how aircraft hangar groups work. For more information about NFPA Link and how it gives you the knowledge that you need to get the job done right, visit nfpa.org slash link.